back to my channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Casey, and I'm all about spreading plants and positivity. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Pilea peperomioides. I like to call it the pepperoni plant. That is not a name it probably goes by, but it also goes by UFO plant, friendship plant, Chinese money plant, left sea plant. I like calling it the pepperoni plant because it's the easiest to remember for me, and mine's, I actually named this one pepperoni for that exact reason. So it just makes sense. Um, I've had this one for, oh gosh, almost a year now? So today we are going to be going over the watering, soil, and sun requirements. So let's talk a little bit about some Pilea peperomioides. So we are going to be actually starting off with sun because it is probably one of the easiest. This plant loves sun, it just does not like direct sun. I actually have mine in a north facing window and it is doing spectacular. It has always been in a north facing window. Definitely loves sun, just not direct sun. And the more sun you give it, I found that it will grow faster for me. But um, one of the things that I would highly recommend is to rotate this plant daily, if not every other day, if not at least as often as you can remember to do it, because you can even tell. I rotated mine a few days ago, and if you look closely like at the new growth, you can kind of tell it's like leaning that way. And um, if that's the look you're going for, then don't rotate it because I think they kind of look cool. I've actually seen one that kind of like draped over like a vine and I've been honestly debating on doing it to this one because I loved how that one looked. And this plant also has like a pretty regular temperature between 55 and 85 degrees and also as far as humidity goes they're fine in your average household. Humidity they I don't know if it's prefer or tolerate, but they seem to handle temperature humidity very, very well. Very similar to a succulent. They really like, they're very drought tolerant. So if you live somewhere with really low humidity, like me inside of this household, this would be a really good plant for you. And also another thing, like I just said, they are succulent plants and, well, they're not succulents, but they're succulent-like plants. And this is the closest thing to a succulent that I can keep alive. So now we are going to talk about watering. And this is something that I find to be the absolute easiest in my opinion. So whenever I started to notice the leaves on the bottom kind of droop, I would go up to it and I would pinch it. Like that. But if I go, let's do this one. So if I go like that, you can tell that like it doesn't need water. It's still, it's very firm. Um, I wouldn't do that test on the top leaves because this is a brand new leaf right here. And it's just insanely fr flimsy to begin with. So I would look for older growth and something towards the bottom. Test out several. You don't want to just take one and test it out that way because that's not going to really give you an accurate, but if you just go around and squeeze some leaves. Now, I'm trying to think of pretty much how often I water mine. It might be a week, it might be every other week, I don't know. I honestly, the only way I tell when to water most of my plants is by staring at the leaves, and that will be a whole video in itself, but if I had to guess, I would say about one to two weeks. You don't want to keep this plant in soil, soggy soil or damp soil for that long. Um, they are not a huge water fan. They do not need a lot of water and sometimes you even have to be a little bit more careful with what you're watering them with. I would stay clear of any chlorine in the water, so tap water might not be your best friend. Depending on where you live, everybody has different water regulations. From what I noticed, these plants have pores on them. So when you look at a leaf, you will see these little tiny dots all over. You can see them in the front, you can see them in the back of the plant. Most people get freaked out when they see them. They think it's either a pest or something's going wrong with your plant. 
all they are is little pores that will kind of like push out any of the chlorine or any of the mineral buildup that you put in through watering. It'll just take all that mineral buildup and it'll just come out the leaves. No, I didn't talk about soil. Let's talk about soil. Let's see what kind of soil this needs. So soil is very simple. All you need is a well-draining soil. Anything where you put the water in and it doesn't sit on the top and it, it'll go right through to the bottom, through the drainage holes, it just, it needs well-draining soil. It doesn't like water. Yeah, so I think in here I see some perlite, some orchid bark, and uh, cactus and succulent soil is pretty much what I use for well-draining. Um, nothing too fancy. Nothing too expensive, just something simple and well-draining. These plants were actually found by George Forrest in 1906 to 1910 in the King Mountain of the Yunnan province of South China. So that is where they originally, first person who actually found them came from. I've been looking for this information myself for a while. Before today, the last part of information I had was of somebody taking a cutting off of his friend and sharing it, and that's how it got its name, the friendship plant. But I knew that before 1946, there was something to do with this plant, and there it is. Georgia Forest in 1906 and 1910 went to Kang Mountains in Yunnan province of southern China and discovered this plant. In 1945, a Norwegian missionary, Agar Nisbergen, rediscovered this plant and brought it home to his family. So that was in 1945, like I just said. And then in 1946, they brought the plant back to Norway with them, so a year later, and it was still alive and thriving. And then after that, Agar has actually been going around to his friends once he got to Norway and giving them the pups that they produced. And that is where the name friendship plant came from because he rediscovered it. They stayed there for a year. It grew for a year. It produced pups. They went back to Norway and once they got to Norway, this man would deliver all of these little pups to his friends thus spreading the plant. So during the 60s and 70s this plant became very popular but the only problem is nobody really knew, especially botanists, they didn't know necessarily where it came from, what it was, what it does, all of that jazz. So they started doing research on it. Now this is the part where I need to grab my phone off because I don't want to be giving you guys wrong information and yeah, so this part, I'll link the article to what I'm using down below, but I feel like this is some very important information, and I kind of want to just read it and try not to, like, miss anything. So, okay. Progress on its identification was first made in 1978 when Mrs. D. Walport of North Hort sent some leaves and its inflorescence of male flowers for identification to coup. The leaves resembled certain species of Peperomia in pepper Peperaceae. Was that correct? I didn't. I didn't say that correct. While the male flowers pointed to Uracea, your Yortis Yorticaceae, Yorticaceae family, which that family is basically the uh, oh, what's it called? Needle stinging needle family. Ultimately, attentive research by the coup botanist Weasel Moraes revealed that the plant was a Chinese species of Pelia, named in 1912 by the German botanist Frederick Diels as Pilea peperomioides. So then, after that, they pretty much, the plants kept getting spread and they started just being known as a house plant. And that is how the Pelia peperomioides is in my house and in your house and a house plant. Which I think is pretty cool because that is the one thing that I love learning the most about plants is what they are, where they came from, how they were discovered, all of that. I think it's super cool and that is why I really like kind of putting these fun facts into these types of videos because yeah, me, personally, I would love to learn uh, how to take care of a plant. I mean, regardless. If I want a plant and I want to keep it, I need to learn how to take care of it, right? 
But another thing that I feel like I need to know is where this plant came from, what's its purpose, how did it become the way it did, and how did people discover what you can do with a plant. So with all that being said, I really hope I helped you at least a little bit with this video, or I hope you learned something new. If you have been afraid to try this plant because you were afraid of either underwatering it or overwatering it, I highly, highly recommend giving it a another go. They're not very expensive. Their care is very neglectful, I guess you could say. And if you're a succulent person especially, I would highly recommend this plant. Even if you're not, I'm not a succulent person. It's not that I'm not a succulent person, but I can't keep succulents alive. So, but I can keep this one alive. And this is, uh, it's a learning experiment. I was terrified of this plant whenever I first bought it. I didn't look at it. I didn't touch it. I, it didn't grow for at least six months, but it is thriving now. So if anybody else has any other questions, please comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and subscribe. And if you haven't, and if you've done that, but you haven't hit that notification bell, you should do so because it will tell you every single time I upload. And if there is anything that I missed in this video, please let me know. And if there's anything that you would like to add for care tips, please put them down in the comments. Help others learn as well. And yeah, bye guys. And then, in 1945, I'm gonna butcher the crap out of this name, Agar Aspergen. In 1945, a Norwegian missionary, Agar, what's his name? A, okay, a Norwegian missionary, Agar Aspergen, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right, um, he also rediscovered this plant in 1945 and brought it home to his family to kind of... And then he brought it home to his family. In 1945, Agar Aspergen.